Hello everyone and welcome to a book review for The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. This is book number one in the Dreamland Billionaires. The name of the series is right along the top there. And I believe this was independently published. I don't know if it's been picked up by a traditional publisher. Um, the reason why I say independently, this is originally self-published in 2021 by Lauren Asher. And so I think it was picked up because it was, what is the name of the publisher now? Oh, published by Bloom Books, an imprint of source books. So it was picked up, it sounds like. So great, congratulations to Lauren Asher on that. So this is book number one in, again, in the Dreamland Billionaires series, originally published in 2021. Um, I did listen to the audiobook on this one on Scribd, and it was narrated by Desiree Ketchum and Aiden Snow. The audiobook is 11 hours and 8 minutes, and this is, alternates between two POVs. The first POV is the male lead, which is Rowan, and the second is Zara, which is the main female lead. This particular edition that I have is not including including the acknowledgements it is 436 pages this is definitely an adult this is a romance this is think of disneyland i mean this is dreamland but it is kind of like a take on disneyland where the main person has died we know that walt disney has passed away but in this particular book the man that created Dreamland is an immigrant from Ireland, I want to say. I could be wrong on that, but he is an immigrant. Um, he passes away, leaves his will, where his three grandsons have to... There's stipulations for them to fulfill their part of the will. In this one, we're following Rowan, whose stipulation is to make some sort of an improvement in Dreamland. Rowan is very rough around the edges, and... When you learn about his background and the people that try to take advantage of him for his money, you can see why he is very rough around the edges and very guarded with his heart and his feelings. So, and how he starts to assume the worst in people when they are really not. Like in Zara's case, everything is pure and the way she says it is the way she feels and what she thinks and things like that. And you can definitely see how Rowan doesn't quite believe that um, with how he is raised. Uh, Zara, um, her family works for Dreamland and she is not afraid to tell it like it is to Rowan. She's like, look, the pay sucks, the insurance sucks, employee morale, I mean, they just love being here and, and helping people and, you know, giving the customers a good time, but the way that they as employees are treated by the owners of the company really sucks. <laughs> so, and she goes into that and a lot of that. Now you do have an affair in this, but it is basically post affair, but it is reflected back on. Um, Zara's boyfriend at the time cheated on her before the story takes place, but it is referenced a lot and has shaped how she feels and how she tries to guard her heart in a lot of situations. So, do be aware of that it is reflected a lot and that can be a content warning for some people uh the other thing content warning you have cancer mentioned in this as well as alcoholism and mental abuse because of the alcoholism i would say and because of grief because family does die and people when they are grieving turn to things they probably shouldn't like alcohol and it can make them be not the greatest of people so do be aware of that um, as far as representations, you have a little child in a wheelchair in this who is right at the start of the book. You do, and who wants to feel pretty, and their parents want her to feel pretty as well. You have, um, Zara has a sister who ha is, has Down syndrome, so you do have Down syndrome rep in this. You also have LGBT rep in this because Zara's best friend and roommate happens to be a lesbian. So you do have a little bit of representation in this and I think Zara is Armenian if I remember correctly. So a little bit of racial uh, diversity there as well. 
Okay, let's talk about now that you know the very brief synopsis that I'm able to give without spoiling anything. Um, and I really don't want to spoil. So these, I really want these to be spoiler free. I just want to give you the stats and the very basic stuff and trigger or content warnings so that you know if this is a book in case you're kind of on the fence so that you will know if this is something for you to pick up or not. As far as sex, there are a couple of sex scenes in this. There's at least four and they are all open door. So do be aware of that. None of this is fade to black. You do get sexually explicit scenes in this. Okay, now let's go into the words. I'm going to try to go in ascending order as far as the words used the least that but can still be bothersome to some people to the word that is used the most throughout this book. Please be aware I could have very likely gotten wrapped up in the story and missed the words a couple of times. So these words are in here at least the minimum that I'm going to give you. Could be a couple of times more, but not too many times more if that makes sense. So I definitely didn't miss the word like 10 times. Two or three, that's believable. Okay, so the words that come up one time are horny, kink, I oh, don't like this one, cunt, hilt, and if you know, it's referencing to male anatomy. That's all I'm gonna say. These are, including slit, not a dress, but female bodily anatomy. Uh, the term foreplay all come up one time. Okay, uh, moving on. We have erotic comes up two times as well as bitch and the name of Christ comes up twice. Come as far as like orgasm comes up two times and that's it that I can see. Okay, moving on three times we have nipple, bastard, the name of Jesus, and there you go, all three times. Okay, four, what comes up four times? Balls. Not the toy balls that kids play with and kick around. I'm talking male anatomy, balls. And come as far as male erection, sperm. Okay, come, C-U-M. Um, come as far as orgasm was C-O-M. And again, that one was twice. Yep, yeah, but C-U-M, come is four times. All right, what comes up five times is shaft. Again, male anatomy on that one. And that's it. Six times we have erection and arousal. Oh, I don't like this word. Pussy <laughs> comes up six times. So yeah, all right. Moving on, we have nothing comes up seven times, but we do have breasts comes up eight times. And if I remember, I think boobs was in one of those, but ultimately the same female anatomy comes up eight times, so breasts. Okay, moving on, we have the word orgasm comes up nine times. Okay, uh, there's plenty of words here. I've got to mark what I've <laughs> told you about. All right, so I've told you that one. So that's all for nine times. Ten times we have the word clit, okay? And yeah. Oh, one other thing before I get into the other words that were used much more frequently, uh, park disability and making the park dreamland more inclusive to people with disability like autism and wheelchair use and other disabilities is an, a thin thread that is woven throughout this and it definitely comes to ahead as far as what they're going to do possibly or that is a goal to make it more inclusive to people with disabilities like having a sensory day where it is much more tolerable and manageable to people who are on the autism spectrum which that I was reading that and I was about wanting to cry but it didn't get me to cry but I almost wanted to cry <laughs> so because more places I think should be able to do that um, but yeah okay so now words that come up much more you have the word cock comes up 22 times. Again, that is male anatomy, not a male rooster, male anatomy, okay? 
So that one was 22 times. As well as another word for cock is dick. That comes up 22 times as well. Uh, the word ass comes up 38. Sometimes not in the far the term of um, physical anatomy, not like your butt. Sometimes ass was used as far as like calling someone an asshole. Okay, so again, other variations of that. You have the word hell coming up 49 times. The name God coming up 50 cents, 50 cents, 56 times. Most of the time it was not in religious context, so do be aware of that as well. A lot of people would say this is taking the Lord's name in vain, so please be cautious about that if that is something that is very bothersome to you. Other words that come up, the last three words that come up, you have shit coming up 22 times, and I am not talking about fecal matter. I am talking about it actually being cussing, okay? 77 times. Uh, damn comes up 83 times. Now, this could have various, very, a couple of different variations. Damn, damned, damnation, damn it, okay? couple of different variations on that, but all in all, the core word is damn, and that comes up 83 times. The last word, as you can probably guess with this being a romance, is the word fuck. So the F-bomb comes up 114 times. Again, this is 436 pages, but 114 times. So let's now end on a couple of things that I underlined or highlighted that stood out to me in this book. I do have a couple of tabs on this. And I would like to tell you about some of these. So, outside of the statistics and some things that touched me as a reader, this uh, are the following. It says, nothing anyone says defines who you are. Only your actions do. Next up, we need to push each other out of our comfort zones because if you're not afraid, then you're not growing. If you don't believe in yourself, no one will. How can we appreciate the sun every morning if we don't live through the dark? The only one I need to prove something to is myself. Life's too short to hide who you are because you're afraid of getting hurt. Great things in this book. Great treasures. The only person who has power over me is myself, not my past mistakes, and definitely not fear. And then on the same page a little later on it says, if apologizing were easy, everyone would do it. Ain't that the truth? A lot of people do not apologize for their mistakes because it can be very hard to apologize. Love makes us do silly things. Everyone has bad times. Yes, they do. Pain tests us all in different ways. Because mm -hmm. everyone copes in different ways. Okay, and the last two I'm gonna tell you about. Change doesn't magically happen because someone threw pixie dust in the air or made a wish on a shooting star. No, that's not how real life works. People need to put in the work to fix themselves. And the last thing I underlined was, love with all your heart and show kindness in all your actions. Okay, I loved this <laughs> book, uh, especially with all the touching moments that I underlined or the phrases that touched me. So yeah, I four stars and I enjoyed this. I had a great time. So hopefully this video helped sway you either one way or the other to either pick up the book if there are things in here that didn't turn you off or things that you're like, yeah, no, that did in fact kind of make you go, eh, I don't like the language or whatever in this book. So talk to me in the comment section below. Now, Lauren Asher has written other books. So have you read anything else by Lauren Asher? Have you read the Dreamland Billionaires series or even just this first book, The Fine Print? Talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.